Hello again. Um, we are back. We are back for another quick look at my chicken. Um, if you've seen previous couple of videos, you probably noticed there was a couple of little changes here. Just want to take you through them. Some um, excellent technology out there for gravel bikes these days, and um, yeah, I picked up a couple of things and did some alterations. <laughs> Uh, some little hacks and bodges, etc. Um, well, in the UK, it's uh, start of June. We've just been through a wet period. Back on my usual corner. <laughs> it's only right, just passing here to do one of these. Um, yeah, it's been wet for over a month. We had a, a week of dry weather, and it seems to be really good. So I thought I'd come out on the gravel bike today. Um, I do have a set of road wheels for this, 700cc by 38 or 38.42 I think it is. Some specialised um, tyres on it which are kind of good for road and gravel. It works really well as a road bike also. So previous one video, uh, the live grip fork, um, it's absolutely amazing. It just soaks up about 30 mil. You can see the distance there between that bumper. Um, works really well. And I've got the uh, 30 mil wide DD Swiss blind 1501 wheels on there. Um, got a new bag. Another one broke on the zip, so I've got this Burzman one. It's pretty good. It's lots of uh, internal space. Side pocket with Velcro strap, some pockets on the side also. It's kind of waterproof and fits really nicely around. Um, got a new fabric saddle. I forget what it's called, but I like saddles with uh, a bit of relief in the centre area. Um, I've got two Chibolito tubes in there, the SL ones. Uh, kind of cavo strap, I forget who it's by and toe peak inflators there just worst case scenario you know they don't really bob around I use this I transfer these over to my mountain bike and um, they just don't go anywhere I put them through a lot of abuse um, whoop, I think it's going to fall over so what has changed <laughs> I don't know if I can hold this up now um, basically I was getting a bit Annoyed with the SRAM brakes. Not the SRAM brakes, so I was thinking about upgraded GRX on this, you know. But what I eventually ended up doing was going DI2. So, excuse the shoddy camera work because the bike is currently falling over. So, I basically got pretty much the same kind of setup apart from the shift on my mountain bike, and it encouraged me to put it on this bike. Um, so DI2 XT rear mech, you can see the cable going in internally there. I've kind of bulged this bit of plate down here. As you can see it, uh, it's kind of cover where the battery cables go through into this battery area down here. It's all a bit dirty. Here's my battery externally on this internally on my head tube on my mountain bike um, but underneath here are some little shifters and if I press these see on the hoods it makes the rear mech move up and down um, Got a cheap display, this is all second hand stuff apart from the shifters. But obviously it tells you what gear you're in. And it also corresponds to my uh, thing here as well, tell me what gear I'm in here, see. Um it tells you battery level, charging point on the side, Bluetooth. You can also do trim on this where you'd normally use uh, and limit screws and whatnot on the back and a barrel adjuster so you can hold this down here and then you can adjust the trim with the trigger shifters 
Yeah, so I chose to do this because I wanted GRX and nothing was in stock. And I was quite happy with the SRAM brakes. They're okay. I usually like a lot of Shimano stuff. And um, you, know, you can see my cable routing here. <laughs> it's pretty naddery. Um, got a pro dropper lever as well. <laughs> Just quickly. A bit better than the other one. Actuated like this. And it's quite nice to get little micro adjustments. But yeah, GRX about stock, it's very expensive, had to change, brakes round internally, etc. etc. Not as possible, but a pain in the ass. And I saw the cheap die 2 come out from a mountain bike. And um, I got it, installed it, it was fantastic. So I thought, huh, I wonder if I could do the same for this. So I basically sourced the same things, did a bit of research and um, working out cable lengths, etc., junction boxes, and where to put batteries and whatnot. <coughs> um, and then I just had to find these little trigger things. I don't think you actually see them. Let me move this off here. Yeah. These little triggers here, see? And now, when I press on the brakes, or press on the shifters, it doesn't actuate the brake. It's very minimal, see, but I can still use the brakes. I have to think about putting them here, but I didn't bother in the end. I might change them around later, but they're really good there. And the advantage of this system is that you can just, you know, rather than click, 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 click on the shifter, you just hold it and it will quickly shift through. You can change settings on the Bluetooth via an app on your phone, the YouTube app. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. Um, I've pretty much same, got, got the same tyres on, I've got no, hardly any uh, kind of clearance there and there. But no, um, Nog Bell, I think I've heard that before, don't know. Sweet bike carries on evolving and being very, very sweet. Um, anyway, hope you enjoyed my fumbled camera review of this thing it continues to be a good workhorse and I love it the bits I encourage anybody to mess around with their own custom builds also <laughs> hope this inspires you bye